Hi, welcome to the Practical C Sharp video series. I'm Andrea Angella, and in this video, I want to talk about how to use the select many extension method in Link using C Sharp. I have a question application as usual. I have a class box that contains a name and an array of numbers. Then I have a collection of boxes and I want to perform some sort of operation. And we're going to do that using the select many. Like, first of all, we want to return a list of all the numbers combined from all the boxes. So we want to put all the numbers together and show them to the screen. Our first attempt might be just trying to use select and takes uh, the numbers, something like that. But if you run this, you're going to see that we get three arrays of course, because numbers is an array, so select is just projecting all the arrays, and uh, the, the results will be an innumerable of arrays. Um, well, what we want at the end is uh, a single array of integers. And that's where select many comes into play, because allows you to actually flatten a sequence of sequences um, after doing a select. And if you do that, as you can see, the result is all the numbers combined. So now, this one is actually an innumerable of int. So it's fairly simple, fairly, fairly easy to use in this particular scenario. You select the collections that you want to expose for each element of a sequence, and then select many does the flattening for you. There is another way of achieving this using the query syntax, and let's, let's do that. So let me comment this out, and try to do the same using the query syntax. The way to do that is using the from close twice, one for boxes, and then one from number, like that. And then you select what you want. In this case, we want just the number. And if you run this, you get the same results, all right? Exactly equivalent way of doing it. Excellent. Now, let's try to do something more complicated. We want to return the list, still the list of numbers, but we also want the name of the box alongside. Okay, so let's start using select many to do that. But we're going to use another override of of the of select many. So the first step is the same. We project the numbers collection. But now we want to say how we are going to use the box and the number in order to generate the, the, the results, so how to flatten the, the sequence of sequences. And as you can see here, we, we accept a box and a number, and the result will be the number followed by box name. So select many takes two arguments. The first one is the called collection selector, so basically returns the collection you want to expose, you want to select. And then the result selection that basically um, instruct the framework on how to actually create and how to flatten the sequence of sequences, also using the initial box, the initial um, item of the of the initial sequence that you actually used in the select menu. So you can expose any properties you want in the final result. And if I run this, you can see that alongside the number, I get the box name. Now, we can achieve the same result using the query syntax. Like, let me comment this out, oops, and use the query syntax from box in boxes, from number, oops, number in, oh, in box for numbers. Instead of selecting just the number as we did before, we select the number and the box name. So I'm using tuples here as a result type. This is incredibly more expressive, in my opinion, than the previous one. That start to be a bit more difficult to understand. But obviously, it's a personal preference. If I run this, you get the same result. OK? Excellent. Let's comment this out and try to do something even more complicated. Now, we want to, instead of using the uh, the box name, we want to use the index of the box. So the, the position of the box in the initial uh, initial sequence. And to do that, we can use another override of select many that basically takes um, the element and the index 
and allows me to do something like this. I can say, um, so this is a bit complicated because I want to, I want to, here I need to return a collection, but I can't just do X dot numbers because if I do that, I'm not going to use the index, so I need to be able to use the index. So I need to project use a normal select on numbers in order to basically uh, put out the number and the index together. So let's say number and then index. Okay, it's a bit complicated now, right? It's it's not very very clear, but it should work. Let's see. You get a number alongside the index in the box. The first three are the box zero, the second two are the box one, and then the box two. So you select um, numbers alongside the index and use the, the index provided here uh, by this, uh, this particular override of, of select many. Unfortunately, there is no query syntax in order to just can help you in this particular scenario. Um, so you, you, you do, the, only, the only way is to use the select many extension method to do to do that. I'm going to show you uh, another way of doing that uh, later on when we look at the most complete scenario. So the last exercise is actually to have all of them come together: the number, the index of the box, and the box name. Let's try to do that. This is going to be quite convoluted. It's not something I probably recommend doing, but I want to show you all the possible overrides of the select menu. So this one is, we need to do something similar to what we did before. So let me just copy that, just for simplicity. So we do something similar in order to actually get the index, the number alongside the index, but we need to also provide the selector at the end. Let me put this in a separate line. We want the selector. The selector is a box followed by a tuple, and uh, this tuple here actually is, let's give it a name, this values, this is the number, and this is the index, okay? So what we want at the end here to select is, uh, let me call it t, t dot index, and t dot name, uh, the box name, and t dot number the order you prefer. Then I run it, you can see that I get the index, the box name, and the number associated at the end. Wow, this is it's quite convoluted. You could use the tuple, so you could use uh, anonymous type as you prefer. If you use anonymous type like that, basically you don't need to put the name, something like this. And then here you can just do T dot number t dot uh, sorry t dot index and t dot number something like that this still works okay this is not great it's a bit complicated if you don't care too much about performance you could do the same using the query syntax uh, like that let me comment this out and do the same approach so box boxes Dot number in box dot numbers select okay now I can select the index how can I select the index I could just do boxes dot index of box and then I can pass the box dot name oops, the box dot name and and the number this is extremely more readable, but obviously the performance is not very good because this one is linear and you do this for each box. So this uh, operation is quadratic. But if you don't have a lot of items inside boxes, it's not a big deal for you. So this is incredibly more readable than the other one. Uh, so keep that in mind that you, 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 can, you can use this, this approach instead. But I'm sure there are other, other ways of achieving the, uh, the same result. So this is it for select many. So just to recap, there are four different ways of using uh, select many, um, and uh, I basically cover them all in this in this exercise. So I hope this helps, and uh, if you if you like the video, please um, like it and share it with your colleagues. And if you want to learn more about C Sharp and stay up to date with the net, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.